So there is one thing that I should absolutely not do if I want the rest of development for this game to not be super stressful, and that is building a terrain editor into the game so that I can, like, create hills in the background and stuff. So guess what we're doing today? Hello all the crazy people out there. My name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and welcome back to Tower Defense Games. Today I am finally going to deal with the fact that hey. it looks like these stages are just hovering off in space. And to do that, we are going to go and create ourselves a terrain editor. And it's not going to be fancy. I will say that much. And I've I've got a fair amount of experience under my belt creating terrain editors and game makers, so this shouldn't be too painful. Uh, basically, instead of just having a flat sheet, which is approximately the size of the um, approximately the size of the game world, um, we are going to uh, we're just going to have a, a basically a mesh on the ground that we're going to be able to edit. So. See, that's also, by the way, going to take care of the of the, uh, the little problem where, um, like the terrain, the, the ground doesn't have color because it's now vertex paint instead of a sprite. First things, uh, first I would like to, and I meant to do this in the last video, but if... Um, if none of these are, these, uh, these color macros are actually used anywhere, I would like to get rid of them because... I just, I don't want them to confuse me as to why they're still here if I'm not using them anymore. This was for, uh, before uh, a couple of videos ago when I did the, uh, creating outlines around the selected objects rather than having them flash color. Uh, those were the colors that they were flashing to, and now that we're not doing that anymore, we don't need it. I can close the, um, I can close the, god, the macros file. I'd also like to, and this is another thing that I, uh, intended to do and forgot about it, but I would like to organize the uh, the asset browser a little bit more. Let me throw those scripts into the core stuff folder. Um, the three shaders here can go into... I do not have a shaders folder. Uh, cursor pan, particle bubble, particle main, tower radius. Uh, let me just throw that in graphical stuff, and I guess the shaders can go in there also. Uh, cursor pan is a user interface thing. Um, Let's create ourselves a group, shaders. Let's throw these three shaders into the shaders folder. Let's throw these three shaders into the shaders folder. And <clears throat> is shader set uniform color used anywhere? Because I believe that was, it is not. I believe that was also for the, uh, the, uh, the glowing effects. Okay. As for the rest of these, that's... That's probably fine, I'll leave that where they are. Okay, let's start off by making a commit nice and easy. This is going to be... Organizing the asset browser a bit. And let us go and increase the font size and let us go and create ourselves a terrain editor. All right, this is gonna be fun, I promise. This isn't gonna be stupid. It's probably gonna be stupid. So, I can start off by VKF7. I can start off by creating a new mode. Uh, F7 is going to be for painting the collision surface. Uh, I would like to duplicate this. I would like to use VK F8 instead of F7. Um, I can create myself a new mode. I can say editor instead of editor path mode. I can say editor terrain mode. And... Alright, I'm pretty sure I can just I can just clear the rest of this for now. Uh, selected entity is undefined. We can unset any selected entities. Um, down here, F7 to go into collision painting mode. We can say F8 to go into terrain editing mode. And uh, this is probably actually going to look quite a bit like collision painting because we're going to have a... Uh, okay, I can, yeah. Let me just collapse that to make it easier to read. Uh, we can have a um, basically a paintbrush, but instead of actually painting on the surface, it's going to, um, uh, God, what's it gonna do? It's going to uh, essentially edit the, uh, the Z of the surface, uh, the Z values, the height values of the surface. And um, if we had, if you had the ability to sample from samplers in the vertex shader, this would actually be extremely easy, but we do not have the ability to um, to sample from textures in the vertex shader, unfortunately. Thank you, Game Maker. We should. Uh, you can actually do it on HTML5. I believe you can also do it on the Raspberry Pi since that just uses raw OpenGL instead of converting to DirectX, but alas, 
let's see, collapse the database. Uh, I I said there's like a collision painting mode. Where was that? Where was that to find? I was I was talking and I wasn't paying attention to fabulous. Editor Editor terrain mode equals false. Okay. Now Is there anything else I'll have to do um, when this is done? Editor path mode. I should probably set editor path mode and editor um Collision mode to false. Like like so. No, that's the start page. No, thank you. I may not have to worry about accidentally opening up the uh, the game maker start page with a shortcut anymore with a keyboard shortcut because they are changing the start page. Uh, in one of the two point three point six betas, they introduced a new start page, and um, I think it's not going to. I think it's only going to appear when you open a new IDE. It's not going to appear just whenever you whenever you want. Whenever you uh, either hit the shortcut or click the home button. Anyway, uh, editor terrain mode should be toggled like this rather than being set to a true or false value. And when you're exiting it, it'll do something. Um, like this. If we, In case we do need to do anything to, uh, for example, bake the terrain into the into a model or something like that. We can um, we can do that in here when you exit terrain mode. Anyway, uh, I am going to set this to false in the appropriate um, the appropriate other modes. Let's see. When you hit tab, okay. You know what? Never mind. I was going to kick you out of the uh, the other editor modes when you hit tab, but. Honestly, um, I'm not I'm not interested in, in being super careful about the uh, the editor mode. That's going to be disabled when the game ships anyway. That's only going to be available uh, when you've uh, when you're working with the game source. Okay, let's see. So if I were to run the game now, and if I were to hit F8, we would be able to go into into a terrain terrain editor mode, and Nothing would really happen. This would be much like the um, the base, like the base editor mode, uh, like when I was starting to to introduce uh, to, uh, collision painting uh, a couple of videos ago. So if I were to go into into here, hit F8, nothing would happen. Um, I can't I can't like place an object. I can't place an object. F8. Do I have to? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, MB left. It looks like I still need to disable, like, doing stuff by clicking. Oh, there's a, in the behavior, in the behavior tree. If editor collision mode, nothing happens in there. Else if editor train mode. Uh, this is where any, any and all behavior regarding, um, Processing uh, terrain painting would, would go. Okay, now if I were to run the game, nothing should happen. Which is uh, which is more or less what I want. Now, if I if I click on anything in F8, nothing is happening. Uh, I should probably not draw this text when we're in when we're in some of the uh, some of the other editor modes because it's a little bit misleading. Um, Okay, so when you hit a uh, when you hit path node mode, we are drawing the uh, we are drawing the, the helpful text up here. When you go into instead um, collision painting mode, you draw the helpful text, although it's a little bit hard to read. So maybe it's still work that could be done on that front. Um, when you go into terrain editing mode, same thing. You can um, there's there's text. Okay, uh, this will just be this will just be a simple matter of added. Terrain painting mode. Earlier, earlier, I was planning on actually using one of the other tools that I've made for for terrain painting. So if I were to actually go into my uh, my stuff I've made folder, uh, I have a terrain editor, and I was thinking of oh, this is actually the really old version. Um, where's the new one? 
I know I have one that's not as old as this. Anyway, I was thinking of using that, but um, it was... I feel like it would be easier to just make another one. So, let us actually uh, implement this behavior, and we can do that by... Where is the floor? This is this should be the first the first order of business. Um, okay, so right now this is just six vertices. This is just um, two. This is just a single square. This is made of two triangles, six vertices, and I would like to uh, let's say four var i is going to equal. Let's have this. Let's have these squares be say sixty four by sixty four, and let's have them run say two fifty six off the edge of the screen. Uh, so we're going to be starting at i equals minus 256 on the x. Uh, i is less than room height plus 256. Actually, you know what? Var padding is 256. This just i equals negative padding. i is less than room width plus padding. i plus equals var uh, tile size is going to equal, I think I said 64 tile size. And then we can do this in a, a double for loop of our j equals negative padding. j is less than room height plus four times padding because you can move the camera back a little bit, a little bit further. Uh, j plus equals tile size. And inside here we shall uh, We shall put a bunch of squares. So, uh, vertex position 3D, the X can be I, Y can be J, uh, normal is 0, 0, 1, that's hard coded. Uh, next, X can be I plus tile size, uh, Y can be J. Um, second triangle, or the, the third vertex on the first triangle, rather, uh, I can be, uh, X can be I plus tile size, Y can be J plus tile size. Don't need the times 1.5 anymore. Actually, 1.5 could be uh, handy up there. Uh, the third uh, vertex index three, uh, the fourth vertex is gonna be very similar. Uh, fifth one is gonna be I and J plus tile size, and the last one is gonna be back to I and J. So we're gonna be creating a bunch of squares and we are going to be, um, let's see, this should uh, basically have the game look exactly as it did before, except that the ground is going to be running, running off the field a little bit, which is, which is what we want to start with. And then our terrain editor is simply going to modify each of these vertices. Okay? Okay. Uh, that is not 100% what I wanted this to look like, but nice effort. Okay. Uh, where, where have we gone wrong? This needs to not be times 1.5 up there. That's where we've gone wrong. Okay. I'm also, this is currently being frozen, but I'm not going to freeze it. Um, I'm not going to freeze the vertex buffer because we will need to modify it, and you can't modify a frozen vertex buffer. Now we have, now we have the, um, now we have the, the ground. Okay, so... It's not, I was expecting that, I was expecting um, in my head that this would be running a little bit farther off the side uh, than it is. So instead, maybe I'll make the pattern 512. And also, I do want to know, let's just count how many, uh, how many squares this is. And uh, the number of squares multiplied by six will be the number of vertices. This is yet another thing that will tank performance on the Raspberry Pi. There are just under a thousand vertices here. Uh, this hey. is yet another thing that will tank performance on the Raspberry Pi, but... Um, okay, that we should be able to work with that. That should be enough space. I'm not, I'm not super concerned about... Um, making, making this work at 60 frames per second on the Raspberry Pi. Like, I'm glad that it works at all. Um, but... I, I first want to get this game looking the way that I like it on, on desktop, and if it can run at like 20 frames per second on a Raspberry Pi, it should be able to run on mostly any desktop. Anyway.
let's see. I also said before I commit anything, I was going to not change this, and I'm going to, uh, let me throw this in a function. Let me create a dedicated function for this, because when you create a new level, or maybe if you want to clear the terrain at any point, uh, I would like to just be able to recreate this without having to manually type that all out again. So I'm just going to throw this in a little function, and I'm going to call it, uh, let's make a script. This is going to be create ground, uh, instead of typing a vertex buffer v buffer. And this can, this can take a vertex format as an input parameter and like that. And we can make that a local variable. Doesn't need to be an instance variable for anything. And then at the end, return ground, just like that. Okay, and then ground equals uh, create ground. And it takes format as the uh, as the input. Okay. Let's see. This should cause the game to behave as it did before. I'm just going to check that before I make any commits. I have been recording this for 20 minutes already, and I haven't even really started on the terrain editor yet. This has just all been set up. I know that the fact that these are getting, like, longer and longer, that these uh, videos are getting longer and longer is just a, a foregone conclusion at this point, but anyway... By the way, uh, the same way that, since the ground is like bigger than the, the actual playing field now, uh, in the same way that I'm drawing the um, the red line in the bug mode, I would like to draw uh, a red line around the other three sides of the square. Um, but first I will make this commit like that. Uh, I'm just going to take a quick break. Since I am rendering last week's video in the background here at the same time, uh, that's got a couple minutes left. It's going to take a little while because I'm uh, also recording a video and also doing game dev at the same time. But um, I'm just going to keep an eye on that. And I may I may break in the middle of this video just so that I can upload that and do the whole Patreon thing. Anyway, let's see. I, I did not get rid of all of these .d3ds. I thought I did. All of these load models. Guess not. I know I took out the texture cord and the thing, but whatever. It's not a huge deal. Okay, first off, see, red, if I search this, this is going to, in the editor mode, uh, if I were to do a line vertex submit with just a line strip, and we're going to be just using a regular primitive buffer, not a, not a special vertex buffer, not one that we have full control over, um, Oh, this is going to be a, a, a vertex buffer. I can do this several more times. So this is going zero height to width height, uh, which means that the next one, since this is being drawn as a line strip, I would want to be um, field width and zero. And the fourth one, I would want to be zero and zero. And uh, we're going to want one, two, three, four, we're going to want one last fifth vertex, and that's going to be uh, back to back to the starting position. That should give us a uh, a nice like line in the sand, as it were, uh, as to where the actual bounds of the playing field are. Uh, there is nothing, no technical reason that we should be confined to the playing field, other than that, like for gameplay purposes, I I would like to keep the size of of where the gameplay happens somewhat constrained. Um, so we now have the, uh, we now have the, the red outline being drawn around the, um, some of these are not fused, interesting. Uh, we, we now have the red outline being drawn around the, uh, the playing field. Okay, that is worthy of another commit. There we go. So, if we want to visualize, um, if we want to visualize exactly where the vertices are, on um on the ground uh we can do that we can either like create a mirror uh vertex buffer which represents just a line list and which you draw with pr underscore line list but instead i think oh gosh where is render instead i think when we draw the ground where are we drawing the ground 
vertex submit ground. Uh, I can instead say if um, if gameplay mode equals equals game mode stop editor and uh, editor terrain mode, um, we can essentially draw the existing vertex buffer, but instead of uh, instead of submitting it as a triangle list, we can submit it as a um, line strip, and that's a little that's a little dumb hack that'll give you approximately a wireframe. It won't be exactly. There will be some um, uh, some lines in places where they shouldn't be, but it'll be approximate. And for like debug purposes, if you just want to see sort of where vertices are, it's good enough. Um, the shader that we're using here, by the way, is actually, like, the world shader, isn't it? And I think I'm going to want something else, uh, because this is going to, uh... The world shader does not actually sample texture, does it? So I can probably just get rid of this and it'll be just, just as good. Um... Let's see, let me just quickly create myself another shader, uh, which is going to... Position normal color, that's right. Just same thing, just no texture coordinate. And we are going to um, let me call it like shader debug wireframe or something. And I think there is a, a way that you can actually like enforce the game to draw a wireframe in a shader. I do not know what that is. Um, so drawing with the, uh, the line strip primitive is going to be good enough for me. Let me just Get rid of all the all the gross stuff that just bothers me irrationally. In the vertex shader, in the fragment shader, um, we are we really do not need the, the we really don't need any of these variings. Uh, Color is going to be a C underscore black, so zero, zero, zero. On the red, green, and blue, the alpha is going to be one. And honestly, let's just uh, let's hard code in an offset of a uh, of one point zero on the Z on the Z axis. Not even going to bother setting a um using the world matrix or anything. Uh, let us. If we are drawing the wireframe, we can uh, shader set sht underscore debug wireframe, uh, draw the ground with the line strip primitive type, and we can we can reapply the world shader. Okay, is that going to set all the uh, is that going to set all the relevant uniforms? Also, that might be a little bit a little bit more work than we have to do, but it's the editor. <sighs> okay. Go into editor mode, and we are not indeed drawing any such thing. Why are we not drawing any such thing? Oh, right. I uh, I didn't actually enter. There we go. So you can see we have approximately we have approximately. <laughs> this is not quite correct, but we have approximately a wireframe. Would it be, would it look better if I used a line a uh, line list instead of a line strip? I usually would go with a line strip for these, but would it look better if I didn't? Okay, in this case, and here I'm just in the in the editor on the title screen because who cares? Uh, in this case, yes, yeah, since these are all squares of the same size, a uh, a line uh, line list would be would be better because we're not essentially going to be um, connecting the dots like totally, uh, which which can make things a little bit odd when it comes to squares. Um, I'm not gonna get into that. I want to make videos on the, uh, the other primitive types at some point, but that some point is not today. Let's see. Commit this. Uh, we can draw the terrain as, as a wireframe. Like that. And now, uh, we should just be able to, um, when you're in, when you're in the editor terrain mode, uh, cast array. Um, editor terrain mode is over here. We can cast array into 
into the ground, and it looks like I should be able to piggyback off of Get Under Cursor. How is that going to work? Um, Camera.from, camera.mousecast, and... Oh, okay. Is... Is camera's, like, mouse cast already, uh, already a ray that's going into the screen? It is. Very nice. Okay, so I can follow that into the ground. Um... Which I'm pretty sure I'm already doing somewhere. Oh, floor intersect. Floor intersect is already uh, is already calculated. Okay, so let me let me go into editor terrain mode and <clears throat> let's say the uh, floor intersect. This is where the camera hits the floor. If I were to draw just a test object at this position. At floor intersect, you would see that its origin would be uh, would be where the, the mouse is pointing into the ground. Uh, that is a lot like some of the other editor features that I've added to this in the past. Now, I would like to do a little bit of um, of work if mouse check button and be underscore left. Uh, let us, I suppose, and this is a vector three, isn't it? I think this is a vector. Uh, if floor Intersect dot x is less than. Actually, you know what? We'll hang on. Never mind. I won't be fancy about this. Uh, var ground buffer is going to be buffer create from vertex buffer. Uh, this is going to be ground because I never gave it a fancy name. The type is going to be buffer fix. The alignment is going to be one. Once uh, what, we're gonna do all of our of our uh, terrain editor operations in here, and then if okay, let me gather my bearings. Um, once we're done with all those operations, we can buffer no vertex delete buffer uh, the existing ground vertex buffer uh, ground is going to be equal to um, vertex create buffer from buffer. Uh, the buffer is going to be ground buffer and the format is going to be self dot uh, format. I really have been trying to enforce the use of self and mostly failing, haven't I? So let's, let's do that. I should have committed to that, that like code style way back when. Uh, the self keyword was slightly, slightly glitchy in the early days of Game Maker Studio 2.3, so early on I didn't really use it the way I'd, I'd like to, but um, still trying to uh, clean things up from then. Anyway, once we're done with that, once the ground vertex buffer has been recreated, uh, buffer delete, like that. Uh, this operation is probably going to tank the frame rate at least a little bit. We do have about a thousand vertices in this ground buffer, and we're going to be iterating over them and possibly doing stuff to them. Uh, we can say for var i equals zero n is going to be buffer get size ground buffer uh, i plus equals no i is less than n i plus equals this is uh, the vertex size is twenty eight bytes isn't it um, twelve uh, twelve position twelve normals and four four bytes for color yeah that'll be plus equals twenty eight. Um, I can say var zz is going to be equal to um, buffer peak ground buffer. Uh, the offset is going to be i plus uh, i plus zero would be x, i plus four would be y, i plus eight would be z. Um, I will need to mess with normals eventually, so I will just say var nx is going to be buffer peak the next uh, index, so uh, twelve n y and n z. And I will go about recalculating these should I need to later. Uh, but first, those indices are going to be 16 and 20. And then I can say, uh, let's just do this a little bit simply. If um, point distance uh, floor intersects dot x, I am 90% sure that this is a vector. Yeah, OK, so that's a vector. Uh, if floor intersect dot x floor 
intersect dot y. Um, okay, I will need just the x uh, and the y's themselves. Not to modify, but to uh, to get the distance to x, x, y, y. Uh, if this is less than, let's just give it a, an arbitrary range of 100. We can straighten that out later. Um, let's say uh, buffer poke. Uh, in a poke into the ground buffer uh, at a type of buffer. Oh, I still need the, uh, the type here, don't I? This is going to be buffer your F32. Uh, the type for the poke is going to be F32. And the value is going to be ZZ plus 1. Okay, hopefully this works. Um, I, uh, I see no reason why this should not work. Uh, it's not going to be really shaded properly. It may lag the editor a little bit, that's fine. Um, but we should be able to see the, uh, the deformation itself and the pixels that are filled and also the, uh, the wireframe. Let's see. I really hope it's as simple as this. Like I said, terrain editors in 3D and Game Maker are something that I've got a, a bit of experience doing. Nice. Okay. That's great. Works on the first try. I love it. Uh, terrain editors in Game Maker are something that I have a bit of experience doing and, uh, and making. Um, and, oh, this is so satisfying. Perfect. You have no idea how happy this makes me to see this working on the first try. Okay, so uh, let me delete that empty space. Let me uh, let me make this commit. Uh, terrain editor, yay! Worked on the first try. Uh, next, we'll deal with the normals. As I said, the, um, the the shading isn't quite correct, and to make the shading correct, I would need to mess with the normals. I have code. somewhere triangle normal this is a this is just a little bit of code that will calculate a normal uh this is fairly old do i have just like a math script i should probably just have like a math script somewhere i actually thought i did i might have deleted it when i did that that house cleaning not too long ago No, not a group. I want a script. We're just going to call it math. Uh, this is going to be triangle normal. It's going to take nine arguments. X1, Y1, Z1, X2, Y2, Z2, X3, Y3, Z3. It's going to essentially just do cross products, and it's going to return a new vector 3 composed of these values if a cross product if a, a normal can be generated otherwise known as if the um uh if all the points are not the same uh, otherwise it is going to return a new vector 3 of 0 0 and 1 uh this gml pragma force in line that used to be like an old yo-yo compiler um directive but i don't believe that's really relevant anymore i think the yo-yo compiler in the modern day will inline simple code anyway, with or without you asking. Um, anyway, generating normals. Let's see, first I'm going to need to actually identify the triangle. Uh, to do that, and I really hope this won't come back to bite me in any way, shape, or form in the future. Uh, to do that, the, the triangle is going to be, what is 28 times 3? Uh, 56, 84. Um, like the base index of the triangle that we're looking at is going to be I divided by 84 rounded down. And that is going to, um, I'm going to want to grab the Z, like the X, Y, and Z of, of each of the, the three vertices and use that to, to generate the normal. Uh, so I, I can say var x1 is going to be buffer peak, ground buffer. Uh, the offset is going to be base index plus 0, 0. 
Uh, the type is going to be buffer f32. Uh, y, y1 is going to be this plus 4. Um, I, if you've been watching any number of these tower defense videos, I'm sure you know where this is going. Um, X, oh, you know what, this needs to be Y1, Z1, and then Y2, Z2, instead of whatever I started typing. Uh, the second one is going to be 28, 32, and 36. And the third one is going to be uh, X2, X3, Y3, Z3. This is going to be plus 56, 60, and 64. And normals is going to be triangle normals um, x1, y1, z1, x2, y2, z2, x3, y3, z3. And we can buffer poke ground buffer base index plus, what is the z, uh, the, the normal z, plus 20. Um, buffer f32 and a value of normals dot x that's no i want i want 12 because these are flat normals and all three of these are going to be assigned to the same thing all three of these uh these vertices rather uh this is going to be 16 this is going to be 20. uh the second triangle is going to be uh what's 12 plus 28 is 40 44 and 48 and the third triangle is going to be 12 plus 56 is 68, 72, and 80. Okay, that should generate our normals. I, I really hope this works the way I want it to. I want to be two for two on having code working on the first try today. It doesn't look like we actually are. Okay. I feel like that doesn't look correct. How did you end up all the way out there, sir? I see the wireframe is being a bit weird. Okay, we're not, we didn't get this working on the first try, but I think we got, I, I have to imagine we got close. Let me hide all the stuff on the side. Um, I know that, I know that this is correct. And... Why would, why would this not be? The ground is drawn with the uh, with the world shader, isn't it? No, that wouldn't be that wouldn't be the problem because as we saw, there were some triangles ending up like in places where they shouldn't have been. Um, th is my math wrong? This is twelve. Um, Twenty eight plus twelve is definitely forty, and fifty six plus twelve is definitely sixty eight which definitely should be the NX, NY, NZ. Oh, you know what? Hang on, wait, wait, wait. At least one of these values is, this should be 68, 72, 76. Rather than, uh, rather than 68, 72, 80. Shouldn't they? Yeah, color, color would be index 80 and then color would take up uh, 80 through 83. Yeah, okay. That's probably it, that's probably the, the issue. All right. Um, I do not see lighting being changed. There's still something funny going on down there. And we're still generating... Oh, you know what we're probably doing? Uh, 0, 4, 8, 28, 32, 36, 56, 60, and 68. No! I was gonna say, I think I'm, I was messing something up up here also, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Oh, wait. I need to round this down to the nearest, like, 84. I need. I don't need to have that actually be div 84. Okay. That's probably gonna... I suspect we're reading a lot of, like, normal and color. And, okay, there we go. Now we have, a, now we have lighting. Okay, and it looks like the results printing out in the console are approximately where they're supposed to be. We're not having... We're not spazzing out all the way at the, uh, at the corner of the room anymore. Perfect. All right. So that was more like, what, the third try? But we got there. And I've only been recording for 48 minutes. I am under the hour mark so far, uh, which is, as far as I'm concerned, a good thing. Let's see. 
I did mention the uh, terrain painting. I don't want that to be super fancy. I don't want to have like a full on color picker or anything like that, but I do want the ability to paint the terrain uh, green or uh, brown or whatever uh, may the appropriate color may be. Let's see. I also need to load this to a file and save this to a file. And I think I'm not actually using the NX and Y and Z over here. Um, I'm instead later on gathering the normals um, through there. Okay, let us make this a commit. And and we can uh, we can commit that. And I suppose the next logical thing to do would be to uh, actually wait before I do anything else. I do want some ind indication as to where you are like looking. Uh, I can define a radius for edit radius is 100, and that's just going to be how how close um, affected vertices have to be before they're uh, they're raised by the um, um, the the terrain raising thing, and in the the debug wireframe, I can uniform float radius. Uh, I can start off by saying uh, let's let's bring the color varying back, and we can. We can assign the uh, the vertex color that we're getting as a varying from the vertex shader to the gl underscore frag color, and say if um, length. Actually, I'm also going to need uniform vec to uh, mass position. Uh, if length. Actually, there's a distance function. If the distance from mouse. M O U E S really, uh, from, from mouse position to in underscore position dot X Y is less than radius. Else, uh, if this is the case, we can say V color is going to be vec for uh, one zero zero one. Otherwise, V color is going to be a vec for a uh, zero 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 one. And this is an if statement. This is not. This should not, I should say, be a problematic if statement because it's the ex it's uh, based on the exact same number of instructions in either branch, and the shader compiler should be able to uh, um, execute this in constant time, uh, regardless of uh, which which path the um, the code goes down. Uh, let's see. In in here, I can shader set uniform f. Uh, Shader get uniform. We can set, we can get the uh, radius, and the radius is going to be 100. That's hard coded. Uh, you could choose not to hard code that if you want. And lastly, there is mouse position. Um, and the mouse position is going to be self camera dot floor intersects.x self.camera.floor intersects.y and this should allow us to just have uh, have the wireframe, the parts of the wireframe that are uh, closer to the camera uh, closer to the mouse cursor than 100 units just be just be uh, red and we can see that is, is exactly what is happening okay perfect um, it's not perfect uh, as the as the terrain goes into the air uh, this is only accounting for X and Y position. This is not accounting for a vertical position. Um, I'm not going to be doing like a collision ray cast to see to see where uh, um, the mouse the mouse is where the mouse is intersecting the terrain because that would be expensive. And okay, so I should probably check to see if if that is defined first. So if this has a truth value, uh, we're going to be setting it to that. Else, we're just going to be setting it to like negative a million or, or whatever. So 
something far off in the distance. And that should prevent us from drawing that. And also, I'm realizing um, we should probably... We should probably also check to see if floor intersect has a value before doing this. Like that. Uh, because should I have clicked at the moment where the error occurred, even if the... Even if the error didn't occur in the draw method, uh, it still would have occurred uh, in the, the step event if I had clicked. Okay, so now if I were to, to raise the the mouse off of the off of the ground, you can see that the the glow disappears. And if I were to, you can't see this, but if I'm clicking off in the ceiling, uh, nothing happens. Okay. Uh, we can we can say that this is going to be draw. Draw a highlight on the grid in the terrain editor where the mouse is. I am going to, I think this has stopped because my computer fan has stopped whirring around. I am going to just check this real quick and upload it and then I will be back uh, with the uh, with the actual video. I'm uploading last week's tower defense video as I'm recording this week's tower defense video. That's just, I should have had the editing done last night but I fell asleep uh, fairly early last night and I didn't have time to finish so I had to do it uh, this afternoon. Anyway. Okay, where were we? So for one, let's see. I've I've established that uh, I want I want the left mouse button to make the train go up and the right mouse button to make the train go down. Uh, so I can var go up is going to equal mouse button left. Var go down is going to be equal to mouse button right. Uh, if go up or go down. If one of those two are true, let's see, if one of those conditions are true, if one of those two buttons are pressed, then we will be uh, performing this operation. Uh, where it's actually happening, if go up, else, if go up, uh, the z plus 1 is going to be pushed into the buffer, else uh, z minus 1 is going to be pushed into the buffer. And that will uh, that will cause, if you're holding both buttons, up will take priority over down, but that doesn't really matter. Let's see. So we can make the terrain go up, we can make the terrain go down, okay. That's fine. I'm probably going to institute a minimum, minimum uh, depth uh, when you're going down. Actually, will I? Do I really want to? Not really. Because I don't foresee the need to go more than a couple of units down is going to happen very often. Um, I do think I want it to go slower, though. Let's save our edit rate is going to be equal to 0 0.25 instead of 1. And instead of a hard coding uh, a 1 into the... Uh, Z plus, Z minus, we're just going to make that equal to edit rate. And that will cause the terrain to deform somewhat more slowly. Uh, if you're making a fancy terrain editor, you probably want different edit modes. You probably want, like, different brush shapes. You probably want um, things such as the ability to, like, reset terrain height. But I think I might add a button to reset terrain height. But I don't, um, I don't think I'm going to do anything fancy with, like, brush types. Um... As far as brush types for the color goes, I am pretty sure I will not really be needing any, like, color for, any special color for, um, any maps with more than one terrain color. There's just going to be a couple of maps with sand and everything else is just going to be grass. So I think I'll just, I'll just uh, paint the entire terrain the, a single color. Um, let's see. I think that's it for, uh, for deformation. Next, I'm going to close this, commit this, uh, go up or down, like that, and let us let us set color. Uh, to do that, I think I'm going to... Alright, so I'm not using these anymore. Yeah, I'm not using those products anymore, but I will use the color. Um, 
if you are in in terrain mode, uh, let us draw on the next line. One can be color dark green, two color light green, and three color sand. Um, let's see, let me just grab the hex color of these. This is going to be, where's the eyedropper? The eyedropper is this one. Uh, this is going to be that hex code. Um, let's see. Okay, so if key, uh, keyboard check, and I'm having to think about this, uh, if keyboard check, how, how do you, um, actually, I'll just use the number pad. I forget if you want to check the, the row of numbers on the top of the keyboard, if you have to um, if you have to enter the numbers, like ORD 1, I, I guess I can find out easily enough. Oh, that's the hex code. Hang on. Copy, paste. Like that. Um, this is sand. Or three or two. I'm just gonna if I hit if I hit the one key on the on the home row, I'm just gonna show a message box and that will tell me if I can if I can check those keys for input or if I'm gonna have to use the number keys the number pad. Um, okay, I can I can just do that. Fine. Uh, light green. This is light green. This is going to be hex code. Whatever this is, I will need to reverse this from red, green, and blue to uh, blue, green, red, because by order. Um, and I think a darker green will be just... Uh, maybe if I'll, if I'll, like, take this and, and darken it a couple of shades, like that. Yeah, okay, that'll do. Let's see. I'm going to, to create myself another function, I think. <sighs> create gram v buffer. All right, you know what? First, let me let me delete these SPR ground and SPR ground sand. Um just to get those out of my hair. I meant to delete those in the last video. Uh, deleted the ground uh, color sprites. Uh, this will be vertex color from now on. Let's see. I think I'll also move this into, I'll move this into another, uh, another script. Um, I'm just gonna have a script called vertex buffer stuff. Uh, that's going to create that's going to contain create ground v buffer. That's going to create um, edit ground height, uh, and that'll take a few parameters, such as Okay, edit ground height is now a function. It takes a source vertex buffer, which is probably just going to be the ground vertex buffer. It takes a floor intersect, which is going to be gotten from the camera. It's going to take an edit direction, which is just going to be positive 0.25 or negative 0.25. And it's going to take a vertex format, which is going to be exactly what you think a vertex format is. Um, edit ground height. Let's see. This is going to have a source vertex buffer of self.ground, it's going to have a floor intersect of uh, this value here. We no longer need that and to be saved to a local variable here. Uh, the edit direction is going to be, I'll just make this a conditional, uh, go up question mark one colon negative one. 
and the format is going to be self.format. And this should cause nothing different to happen than it did before. Uh, let me just let me just run this code and make sure of that. And floor intersect not set before reading it. It should be. Oh, that needs to be a camera dot. Yeah. All right. Since that is no longer a local variable, it needs to be uh, scoped to the camera. All right, very nice. Works as intended. Up and down both directions. Again, if I were to hold both mouse keys, it would uh, it would go up. All right, so this has been, and I really probably should be doing this more often. Uh, this has just been abstracted away to a different uh, a, a function somewhere else in the in the program. Um, I really probably should be doing this elsewhere just to make this main game script uh, cleaner, but gets done. Now, edit floor height is now a function. I feel like you would think that like the way I've been going today, I would be like, I would I would have a lot of like coffee in my system or something, but I I don't drink coffee. The only the only thing I can say as to why I have so much more energy today than I do in a lot of these videos is because I'm actually feeling awake for once. Um, anyway, so I'm going to create a mirror of this function and it is going to be, instead of editing floor height, it is going to be editing floor color. Edit ground color. Uh, it is also going to take a source. It is also going to take a floor intersect. It is also going to take not an edit direction, but a uh, color. And it is, it is also going to take a vertex format. And the edit radius, the edit rate, we don't really need that. Um, let's iterate over the buffer. We do not need to mess with the X, Y, and Z. All we really need to mess with is CC, which is going to be uh, I plus 24. It's going to be a buffer U32. And uh, we can, at the end, uh, instead of doing this whole thing, like all of this, Oh, you know, I do need the X, X, Y, Y at the very least. Because that's, uh, that's used to tell if the point is close enough to actually be edited. Uh, we're going to be using the X, X, Y, Y, uh, ground buffer index I plus 24. Um, let's see, color codes and buffers in GameMaker are in the, in the byte order A, B, G, R. Um, if you were to read this out one byte at a time, it would be RGBA, but since, um, U32s are a little endian, it'll be ABGR. Uh, I can say CC and OXFF 000000. Actually, this will just, A is going to be this. Uh, let's not have this all in one line. Uh, CC is going to be equal to color or AA. And we can write in a new CC. Oh, wait a minute. You know, this is just going to be called on the entire floor at once. We're not going to be painting. So I don't even need to check the distance to the, uh, um, to the tile. I just, I just need to basically flood fill the entire, uh, the entire uh, grid. Okay. Everything else looks good. I can um, edit ground color. Uh, the source buffer can be very much like like this. Uh, we have the source buffer. We have the don't need the floor intersect. We just need the color, uh, which is going to be zero x two five four c zero zero. Again, the byte order is reversed. Uh, this one down here is going to be 0x89c6fd, and this one is going to be 0x51a600. Uh, let me just go over that again, just to make sure. Uh, 254c00, 51a600, 89c6fd. Okay. I do want to make a video on how color codes in GameMaker actually represent color eventually as well. Um, you may notice that these are reversed, what I got out of the color picker, and that is, again, because of the byte order. Um, red needs to be in the least significant bit, the green needs to be in the middle, and blue needs to be in the most significant bit. 
So, let me run the game. I should have the ability to color terrain. After this, the only thing I have left to do is to uh, to save this to a file. Okay. If I already hit one, okay, that's not quite what I wanted. If I hit two, no, not not that either. And if it, okay, um, interesting, very interesting. Oh, I'm writing an F32 instead of a U32. I feel like that's not the first time I've I've gotten screwed up by this somehow. All right, there we go. Dark green, light green, and sand. Perfect. All right, this is this is wonderful. Uh, this is going to be a commit. Uh, we are going to edit ground color. Very nice. Um, I think I can close that code file. I think I can close the debug wireframe. I think I can close the camera. Uh, now I only really need to save um, the ground to a uh, to a vertex buffer with the map. And I think to do to do that, uh, save map. Um, I am also going to save uh, fuse. Should I make this like fuse ground or something, or just like I'll I'll deal with that in a minute. I'm gonna save this with a new extension ground. And this is gonna be uh, self ground. Actually, no, it's not of our ground buff is going to be equal uh, buffer create from vertex buffer uh, the source buffer is going to be self dot ground the buffer type the yeah the buffer type is going to be buffer fixed uh, the buffer alignment is going to be one when we're done with that buffer delete ground buffer And we're going to be saving this to a file. Uh, when we try to load this out, I can... Where are some of the other... Where do I load the other... the other... Okay, here it is. If file exists. Um, file name dot ground. Let's just call it. Uh, if buffer exists, self dot. Um, huh. Oh, you know what? This is not gonna, this is never not gonna exist anyway. Hang on. If self dot ground. Um, vertex but delete buffer, uh, else if the file does not exist, self.ground is going to equal a uh, vertex. What was the, what was the function that, uh, create ground v buffer? All right. That was the function name and it's just going to take self.format. Uh, in the case that the vertex buffer does not exist, um, we're just going to do this in reverse. Um, self dot ground is going to be a vertex create buffer from buffer uh, source. This is becoming very mechanical at this point, and the format. Let's just show a debug message. Uh, let's show a, a confirmation message if we do successfully load a ground thing. And let's say not loaded if we don't. Okay. Probably the last five minutes or so of this video are just going to be, and I, I should see a message of some kind down here. Um, no, I did not. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay, ground buffer not loaded. I was going to say, because I should either see an error, or I should see one of these two messages. Anyway, probably the last, um five minutes or so of this video are going to be another montage of just me painting terrain. 
uh, like this. It's not gonna be, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be fancy. I'm not gonna like go all out with the, uh, with terrain editor, but I'm gonna have, I'm gonna draw a little bit of a border around the, uh, around the world. I'm gonna probably color this dark green. So this is gonna be what we see. If I were to F1 save map, and if I were to find the bombardier folder, uh, data files, maps, I really hope this doesn't crash. If it does, I can just, if it like corrupts the files, I can just, um, revert title.bug from, uh, source control. Uh, let me try this again and see if this loads. I really hope it does. Okay, perfect. We have, uh, we have ground. And I might, I might make it a little fancier. I might make it a little bit more hilly in the background, but uh, we have ground. Okay, that's great. Ground buffer correctly loaded from a file. I can get rid of these status printouts. Um, if I were to, oh, I guess I, I, I kind of can. I can go back to the title from from the title. That makes sense. I can hit start. I can say go to the campsite, and we are going to have ground buffer not loaded, and we're going to be able to do this here. So if I were to. If I were to just do this, I should be able to set set the let's set the woods to light green. I believe that was the uh, the original color. That was. Hang on. You know what else I want to do? I want to have a key to zero the terrain just in case I screw this up, uh, like I kind of did there. All right. First, let me only commit changes to the actual code. Uh, next, I will write some code. Let's say let's hit the zero key to. to reset the terrain height. And I can say if if you hit the zero key, then I'm just going to make myself a new function uh, that's going to lot going to look a lot like this old one and that is going to be editor ground height exact or something like that. Uh, the reason that I picked zero, by the way, is because it is far away from one, two, and three, and the odds of accidentally hitting it when you're trying to paint the terrain instead of, like, reset it is, is probably going to be fairly low. I guess I can always, uh, if, I can always, um, have it ask the user, do you want to reset the terrain height? That would probably be a good idea. Uh, I'll do that as well. Anyway, this needs to be Actually, resetting the height is just going to make the height zero. Why, why, uh, let's just hard code that. So ground buffer, no need for the edit radius or anything like that. Uh, X, X, Y, Y, don't need those. Uh, Z, Z, and N, Z are the only things we really need to change. Actually, uh, N, X, and Y also we need to change. Uh, because those need to be zeroed. Uh, this can be 12, 16, and 20. Get rid of all this, uh, poke, poke the correct values. Um, I plus zero eight, uh, can be zero. Poke, 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 uh, 12 and 16 and 20. Uh, NZ is going to be one in, is, instead of zero because the, the, the default normal vector is zero, zero, one, and everything else should just be should just be fine. Really? Um, I need another one of those, don't I? Okay, so if I were to go into terrain editing mode and if I were to hit the zero key, we can reset it. I guess I'll just have it ask first. Um, if show question. General, uh, general UI UX uh, rule is that whenever whenever you're going to do something dramatic like erasing everything, uh, like erasing all the user's progress or whatever and resetting it to the default state, you should always ask first just in case they accidentally hit the key by accident. Um, or just in case like the cat walks across the keyboard or something like it. it generally, when you're going to quit the game, you should or when you're going to quit a program anyway, you should um, you should ask first. I don't believe Game Maker allows you to to override the default close uh, button functionality. Um, 
without using like a DLL or something. But let's see, this is going to be a little bit of code to edit ground height exact. Actually, I can call this like edit ground reset height. That might be a little bit more descriptive. Let's call it that. And okay, I think uh, the rest of this video is just going to be me um, me uh, playing with terrain and sculpting terrain. Uh, I, I don't know if anybody out there is interested in making terrain editors from the, for themselves, but this is approximately how you would do it. If you wanted to add fancier tools, you would just write fancier code in the vertex buffer stuff uh, script. You would just write, um, for example, if you want like a smoother height transition, you might have the elevation effect like be based on the diff the distance from the exact uh, vertex's coordinate to the the actual point of mouse contact, um, that kind of thing. You could you could do all kinds of crazy stuff. You could do like an average, so you could smooth out terrain. Uh, I am obviously not doing that right now. That would all just come down to doing a little bit of math with um with the the vertices and the surrounding vertices. But yeah, I hope you all found this interesting. I hope to post about two game dev videos a week, one of these and one tutorial tutorial. Uh, this game is coming down to the end. I am going to... What am I going to do next? I've been... I've been... Trying to... Trying to commit to doing... Um, to, I've been trying to commit to what I'm going to be doing in the next video at the end of every one of these lately. Uh, so if I were to go to the projects board, I can... Where's the terrain? I can close this, and I can close this as well because I, I did that at the same time. And I think I I want to stop beating around the bush. I want the next video to be the last level design video. I want to have, um, I believe, 10, 11, and 12 finished off. Uh, I want to have like a couple houses, and I think the last one is titled The Castle or something like that. I want to have a something passing as a castle at the end of this track. Uh, so hopefully, I'm gonna try and kick my butt and get the last the last level design video out next time. Uh, there's not much more to do after that. There's obviously a little bit of game balance. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple final things that need to be that need to be dealt with, like the build area on the Raspberry Pi, the, um, the track area uh, where um, flypaper dispensers and whatnot can, can dispense their payloads. Um, setting for particle density. Hopefully within like four videos we should be thinking about we should be thinking about making a build, about building an executable and posting it on on the internet. And hopefully by like two videos from now, I should have a um an executable posted on the GitHub that you can play if you want. Obviously you already can if you want, you can uh clone the code and you can build it yourself, but uh hopefully by like episode sixty, by week sixty. I'll have an, an EXE to go with the uh, with uh, the pre-release that I post every week. Anyway, uh, whatever music I decide to, to use for the speed-up section here, I hope you enjoy it. Otherwise, I have a Patreon if you want to see your name in the credits or uh, hear yourself shouted out at the end or just generally contribute towards these videos being made. Uh, links to that in all the usual places. Otherwise, thank you all for watching and I will see you all later.
Special thanks to Connor, Edward Holt, Emily Coyo, Posho, Sindra Larson, Tusk, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or hear yourself shouted out at the end, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.